This video is the beginner's guide to using Google search. Now I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, I already know how to use Google search. You just go to google.com, you type in what you're looking for, you hit enter and it brings up results. And for the most part, that's true. That's what you need to do. But there are some interesting hidden tools and tips and tricks that it's helpful to know. So let's look at a few of those. First off, we have voice search. If you're using Google Chrome as your browser, you can just go over here to the right and instead of typing in the word flowers, you can click and once you allow your microphone, flowers. You can just Listings for flowers. Here they are. You can just speak what you want into your computer. If you have a microphone, great, speak it into the microphone, but it will interpret what you said and do the search. So that's a nice little feature, a little trick. Some people will use that more than others, but it is good to know about. Another thing you should be aware of is after you do a search, if you've just done a basic Google search, you will get a list of websites here at the left. That's basically what Google is giving you is websites. Each of these that you click should take you to another website, in this case about trees. Over here on the right, I get a sampling of some of the other Google tools. Okay, so I'm getting a few images here at the right. I get a definition that they pulled from Wikipedia and some other information is provided there too. But for the most part, I'm just getting websites listed here. At the bottom, you can see that there's more than one page. It looks like there's 10 pages worth of results. But if you've used Google much at all, you know that there's more than 10. If I click on 10, it gives me an additional few. And you can see up here at the top, 705 million results. So plenty of websites to read, to look at, and to learn from. So let's look at some ways that we can maybe digest these results a little bit better. 705 million results just is not that useful to me, that helpful, it's, it's too much. So over here at the right, you can see that there are search tools and you can click on that and you can go to where it says anytime and you could change this to be something other than anytime. What about the last hour? So in the last hour, what do we have related to trees? You can see that there's some news, there's some websites that have been recently updated. Instead of 705 million results, we have apparently fewer. It's kind of hard to tell, I don't see a total, but apparently we have fewer results and it's focused on recent results. So that's powerful. You can also do the past 24 hours, the past week, month, year, and you can also put in a custom range. So maybe you've heard about a report, a new report, some new research maybe has been done and you would like to learn about it. And let's say it's regarding trees and trees dying. Okay, so you could do that search, trees dying, and you could say in the past 24 hours or the past month, and it would give you recent results, hopefully including that research that you've heard about that's new. So this is a very powerful tool and a very important tool. I'm gonna do that search again the tree dying search. I know, not a very positive topic to choose, but there we have it. Now, another thing I could do to try to cut down on the number of results is I could use some of the search tricks and tips that have been around for years. Many of you know this already, but if you put some terms in quotes, it should cut down on the number of results. So I had 60 million results before doing this. Now I have 38,000. So from 60 million down to 38,000, that's a big improvement. It's gonna help me focus in on what I'm looking for. Now, you may also know that you can put in some things like minus, you could put in a minus artificial, okay? We're gonna take out artificial trees that are dying by putting in the minus. I've had mixed results with this. Sometimes it doesn't take out that term at all. And I don't know if I'm doing something wrong or what it is, but anyway, that's what minus is supposed to do. It's supposed to take results that have the word artificial completely out. And it looks like it did reduce the number of results a little bit, which is kind of surprising to me. You can also do a plus. So this is gonna force the search to include a term along with tree dying. So tree dying plus the word sap and it looks like I got down to 338 results. So that seems to have really worked. It's requiring the results to have both that word and this exact phrase. These are Boolean type searches that I'm doing, okay? And those are pretty helpful. There's more that you can learn about Boolean searches, but uh, those are the basics I think that you need to get started. So I'm gonna go back to my results to show a couple of other nice things that you can do. Inside of search tools, this is where we found anytime. And, but next to that, you also get all results. When you go to all results, it gives you the option of switching from all results to verbatim. 
And what is this talking about? Well, what it is, is when Google does a search, typically, it doesn't just search exactly what you type in. It suggests alternatives. Maybe you misspelled a word. Maybe you misspelled a phrase or a person's name. Or maybe a website that you really would like to find and read misspelled the name or the term. So what Google does, if you have it set to all results, which is the default, what Google does is it broadens the search. Instead of searching just for tree dying and artificial, it puts in all sorts of variations of these words, maybe some synonyms and things like that. And it gives you more results than it otherwise would. Now with verbatim switched on, what's gonna happen is Google is going to look strictly for these exact words, these exact terms. It's not gonna look for alternate spellings or try to correct mistakes it thinks I might have made. I'm going to click clear to just get back to the defaults. So those are some powerful search tools that are built right in to the Google search. But often you don't see them until you've done the search. So go ahead and do the search first, then look for this search tools button. Before we move on, I want to show you a little trick that very few people notice or know about. And that is, let's say in your search results, you find a wonderful website that you're like, okay, this is exactly what I was looking for. I'm so glad I found this. What you could do is you could put your mouse right here to the right of the URL. This is the URL or address of the website. Just to the right, there's an arrow. If you click on that arrow, you could choose cached. It'll give you some versions of this site that are saved. They're kind of cached. But what I'm interested in is this one, the word similar. So click on similar. And this will give me results that are very similar to the one that I really enjoy and that I really am happy I found. So what a cool thing to generate more results that are similar to that specific one that you like. All right, let's move on. Up here at the top left, you can see I have all selected. And this is usually the default when you do a Google search. It says all, but really what it's showing you is all websites. It's showing you a list of websites. Like I said, sometimes you'll get some results here at the right, some pictures and things like that. But in general, it's just lists of websites. But look, you can also click images. And now instead of searching for websites, Google is searching for images. Now, for me, it remembered that I was interested in websites similar to that one that I liked. If I go in and replace this just with the word trees, you'll see all sorts of wonderful results that relate to trees. In some cases, especially when it's a common word or phrase, you'll get other suggestions here at the top. So notice Google knows what a tree is and it wants me to consider honing in and focusing in on a specific kind of tree. Why not an oak? So I click on oak, it changes. Why not a South Carolina tree? Now I can go back and X out of those, okay? And uh, I could choose something else. Why not a cherry tree? Now you can really drill down and get specific. So a cherry tree from Florida, really kind of a fun way to hone in on a specific kind of image that you're looking for. Now upon doing an image search like this, you get different search tools. So I've already showed you search tools, but that was for just website search results. For image search results, you get lots of amazing options. You can go in here and choose the size of the image. I might want a large size image so that it's got lots of pixels. It's gonna look crisp and beautiful. Okay, so these are some examples of that. Now they don't look large, but that's because this is the thumbnail version of the image. Google has made these images smaller so that they can fit on this page. But if I were to click on one of these, let's say this image here, it gets a little bit bigger, but then I can go here where it says view image and it takes me to the full resolution, highest quality version of this image. Looks like this one has a watermark. So I'm gonna X out of that and go back. But you can see, that that's how you get the higher quality version of the pictures. You click on the image, the small image, it gets a little bigger, then you click view image and it shows you the highest quality version of the image. Sometimes even then you can click on it with the magnifying glass and it'll get even bigger. Now at this point, if I wanted to, if I needed it in a project for my class or whatever, I could right click on that image, save image as, and save it to my desktop. Once it's there on my desktop, I could use it in PowerPoint, in Prezi, in Word, whatever I need to do. So that's, a, that's an image that I could use in all sorts of ways. Of course, we should teach students to cite their sources, and so that's a good thing to do. It's a very important thing to do for teachers as well as students and everybody, really. But uh, that's an image that's easy to take and use in presentations and projects. Again, giving credit. Okay, so remember how we found this large image of trees. I found it by using the search tools after doing an image search, and then I chose 
large from this list, but you can do exactly certain dimensions. You can do larger than certain dimensions. You can get icon size, any of these options. You can also choose color. Now you would assume that trees are brown and green. Well, this isn't talking strictly about the tree. It's the photo itself. What color vibe does it have? Maybe pink. Let's try pink and see what happens. Okay, look at that. The blossoms are pink. So pretty cool. Now I can switch that to yellow and you get a different set of results. Orange. Again, different results. Beautiful results. So uh, even blue. If you click on blue, we could have predicted this, that you'd have lots of blue skies. But this is a fun way to pick the exact picture that you're interested in. You could also go to black and white or transparent or full color. So these are different ways to get the image that you are looking for, that you would like to find. Over here on type, when you click on type, this will help rule out some of the images that you may not want. So you could say you only want face images. Now remember, I'm searching for tree. So it's kind of surprising to me that there's some results that it found, but in many cases there's a tree in the background. So anyway, you could also switch to just photo. So it's not going to give you clip art. It's not going to give you drawings. Or you could go to clip art. You could go to drawings. We also have time. We've already looked at this with regard to websites, but with images, you can do the same kind of thing. Custom range or images from the last week, last day. This next one may be the most important one, especially for teachers and students. There's the usage rights option. And you'll notice here that you can choose to only show images that are labeled for reuse. So these are images that the photographer has designated. I want these to be able to be reused, you know, without someone contacting me or whatever. You can see there's no results. But if I take out South Carolina and if I take out Oak, suddenly there will be some good results. Also, I could change it from animated to any type. Okay, so all of these choices have been limiting my results. So these are images that I can use free from worry with my students, and so can the students use them in their projects. Still important to cite your source, but uh, I think there's an extra level of freedom because I'm using images that are labeled for reuse. So what a powerful tool to find images to freely use with your students. We also have some other tools here, like show sizes. You can make it so that the sizes appear, so you get a sense of how many pixels, how big the image is. I'm going to clear out all of that. And I just want you to know, in addition to websites and images, you can also search for shopping opportunities. I'm not going to spend much time on that, but it is an option. You can also search for maps. And this is nice, I think. It used to be that in order to use Google Maps, you had to go to maps.google.com. Well, now you can just go to google.com, do a search for a place, and then click on Maps, and it'll take you to Google Maps for that specific place. I'm going to click back, and I'm going to go back to All. There's also videos. To be honest, I don't really recommend this. I haven't found it to be that helpful. Google owns YouTube, and YouTube really is the place to go, I think, for video searches. But if you want to search right here inside of Google, you can, and it does give you some search tools. If you go into more, there's even more. Flights, like I already showed you, shopping. You can search for news results. And then there's this one, books. If you do a search for books, it should find free public domain books. Let's see if Tom Sawyer is in there. The Adventures of Tom Sawyer. And I can just click read and it should bring up the book. So there it is. I can just browse down and start reading this book. Now this book is old enough that it is public domain and I'm going to be able to read, I believe, the entire book this way. Here at the left it says ebook free. And it gives me some options for downloading as EPUB or PDF. And I could read this on my Kindle, on my iPad, on my cell phone, on many different gadgets. I can also add it to my library. In many cases, though, you're not going to find the entire book. What you'll find is a portion of the book. But still, it's a great way to explore and find good books to read. So that is the beginner's guide to using the Google search bar to find information and resources that you need. Thanks for watching this video and please consider subscribing to my YouTube channel for more videos about technology for teachers and students. And please watch for a new video at least every Monday.